Director General Robert Ian Smith, it's a pleasure to host you here in Israel. Ambassador Stanley, good to see you again. And Professor Ruth Arnon, who's also with us, and I think will be joining later, later in the panel. Uh, distinguished guests, it's a pleasure to be here at uh, the Bloomfield uh, Science Museum and, and thank our hosts again for having us here in this very important event. And I see this as uh, probably the beginning of, of the discussion uh, regarding the next frame program now coined uh, Horizon 2020. Uh, I say the beginning, but obviously we've already started discussions both internally as well as with our colleagues from Europe, and I expect this to, to continue. But it's important to have you, the participants of both academia and industry, active, you know, showing your, your personal experience uh, of the program, sharing with, you, uh, with us uh, your perspective and advice regarding what we can do uh, as a country uh, with this program. The FRAME program, the European FRAME program has been, has been very instrumental and a key program within our general R&D science and technology map. It has enabled the Israeli industry as well as the Israeli academia to extend our reach, to leverage our existing capabilities with those of our colleagues in Europe both in the research community as well on the uh, industrial front. Uh, I think we can be proud of the achievement Israel has achieved uh, in, the, in the last frame programs, and obviously the seventh is the one that is just, just ending now. And this is a, a good representation, in a sense, to the strong capabilities of the nation, both, as I said, in the academia and in the industry. And again, the thanks is uh, uh, first and foremost to you, the participant and contributors, but also to uh, ESERD, which manages the process, as well as to our, our colleagues uh, in Europe. For us, participating in the, in, in the European research area is, is a good way to interact with our colleagues. And, and R&D collaboration is a key part of what we do in the Chief Scientist. We, we strongly believe, by the way, and this has been said uh, uh, over and over again, that in today's world, it, it is collaboration which is the mother of innovation and not competition. So whereas in the past, we used to thought, you know, both economists and technologists, that if we create a very competitive situation, innovation will spur. Today, it's very obvious, due to many constraints and due to the science-based industries of tomorrow, that collaboration is key. Collaboration between industry and academia, collaboration overseas with other partners because innovation doesn't stop within a certain country or within certain national borders. And I think the FRAME program is a, is a prime example of what can be achieved through such collaboration. And as such, the Israeli participation is, is very important to us and enables us to, uh, uh, to reach to much more significant achievement than we would have uh, be able to do by ourselves. For the Israelis, R&D collaboration is also important because we are a very globalization-driven industry. We have a very small market. Our adjacent countries are commercially challenging, as I usually say. This means that the concept of collaborating with, with external partners overseas is something that is inherent in the DNA. People understand it. Both researchers from academia as well as entrepreneurs understand they have to interact with countries outside of Israel. And again, the FRAME program is a very good uh, uh, framework or umbrella for such, such collaboration. And in a sense, reduces the risk, reduces the time to market, and also the financial needs for, for an industry to get to a, a certain, certain achievements. The FRAME program is also very relevant to us because of its, it covers the entire life cycle of knowledge. And again, this is very similar to what we do here, first and foremost within the Office of the Chief Scientist, but of course with the other complementing governmental agency, is really trying to cover the entire spectrum of knowledge, right from the beginning at the basic research, and this is not part of what we do within the Office of the Chief Scientist. But later on, the translational research uh, transferring and commercializing that knowledge from academia to industry, all the way to funding competitive R&D, real products with real companies targeting uh, real markets and customers. And as such, 
uh, the FRAME program gives us very good uh, uh, analogy to our own programs, and I think this is something that, that will probably be discussed and start to be looked upon at, at the next program, Horizon 2020. I want to touch just briefly, and I'm keeping this very brief, Marcel, because uh, I, know, I know we have a busy schedule today. A few of the points that I think are, are relevant for our discussion as, as we look into the next, in the next seven years. Uh, one of them is something that I think was uh, existed also in, in, in the former programs and will probably uh, be keep, keep going. And, and it, uh, it reflects a, a little difference between how we view the promotion of science and technology and how the European community does. And I'm referring to the, the difference between uh, focusing on, on key enabling industrial challenges. In a sense, you could call it a more market-driven policy. Uh, this is not passive, by the way, but rather neutral. And I, you know, I spend a lot of time explaining to people the difference between neutral and passive. But as government, certainly in the Ministry of Industry, Trade and Labor, we try to focus on those initiatives that are market-driven, that have commercial potential, that really have a very clear objective as reflected by companies. And it's the companies that project, present the projects to us. So it's a much more a bottom-up approach. Again, driven more by, not necessarily by themes or by societal challenges, but rather more by the market needs and, and what are the specific commercial objectives that are out there. Obviously, the FRAME program has both, and it has uh, resources distributed to both. And it, uh, since it has to serve many goals and objectives, it tries to balance that. Uh, but again, you know, in the spirit of openness, I think this is something that is that is out there between the two policies, whereas I would say most of the Israeli governmental policy is not driven by the grand challenges, the societal challenges, but rather from market-driven policies. Now, when we can combine those two, and we have some prime examples from the last time, such as the green growth initiatives, uh, the uh, uh, greenhouse uh, uh, gases emission reduction, and so on, uh, we're always happy to do so. But our, our, our prime DNA is always market driven. And I think this is something that, first of all, we need to understand about each other and then see how we can, we can put that into uh, uh, coexistence, I would say. <clears throat> the other issue, which, which is certainly, I think, going to present challenges to all countries involved, Israel not included, and I know some of my peers are, are going to discuss that later, is really the combination of, of national programs with the EU driven programs. You know, and I think. There's a lot of sense about that. Obviously, the leverage is much more significant if you can tie into the pot some of the government plan and national plans. But I think realization of that is probably going to be uh, challenging, both in learning how to do that as well as in finding uh, the, the right resources. And I, again, no secret, I think, uh, these are times of, of uh, uh, economic challenges for all countries involved uh, within the EU as well as with, uh, I would say, on the, global, on the global arena. And I think this is part of the discussion that we need to do internally, quite frankly, uh, in the different funding agencies, the ministries, uh, the Council for Higher, uh, uh, Higher Education, obviously the Office of the Chief Scientist, uh, in, in trying to better understand what are the new mechanisms and tools that will be included in Horizon 2020 and how we can better combine the national programs with the EU-driven programs under, under your leadership. And I think this ties directly to my first point about having market-driven, bottom-up programs to societal challenges. So this is an open question still. I, I, don't, uh, I don't think I have the answer. But I think this is something that, that we'll probably be discussing in the next year and, and maybe even uh, uh, as the program is, is being implemented. And the last point, uh, again, not, not unique, I would say, to Israel, but very much uh, uh, strong as is the issue of SMEs. Um, there's a lot of internal discussion, I think, within the EU uh, regarding the desire to support small and medium enterprises as a major source of innovation. There are obviously other programs outside the FRAME program that are designed to support that. But as I understand Horizon 2020, this is one of the issues that is strongly discussed there. For us in Israel, this is very important. And 
Again, the reason is very simple. Most of the Israeli arena is comprised of small and medium enterprises. Most of the innovation is done within SMEs. Uh, if I take just the Office of the Chief Scientist budget as a mere reflection, 85% of that budget goes to small and medium enterprises. And this is not by design. This is not because we have a policy to, uh, you know, to prefer small companies, or, or, uh, but rather because, as I said, it reflects the innovation uh, of where it's done. And obviously, large companies are, are important. They're important to our fabric. They're important to this as a source of innovation and spill over to society. Uh, but in the past, I think SMEs had their challenges in interacting with the FRAME program for many reasons. Uh, some are resource driven and some are, uh, 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 again, comes from the themes as I discussed, discussed before. I know and I hear that constantly from uh, Brussels, I would say, as a general name, that there's, there's a strong understanding that small is beautiful. And I, I, I would be happy to see that being implemented in the programs. For us as Israel, this, this could be very important, as I say. I want to I wanna sum up, at least for now, and I know, as I said, probably we'll be joining you again, again in the panel, in, in emphasizing once again, uh, we look at this as a partnership. It's been a very successful partnership, I think, to all parties involved. When we try to analyze the results of the Israeli contribution, we can see the, uh, what we've gained, not only as an economy, but also in terms of knowledge, uh, the exposure to the European research area, the leverage of the existing capabilities with those of our partners in Europe has been very instrumental in bringing us to what we see as you know, one of the leading countries uh, uh, with the world of science, technology, and innovation. I, I really want to thank you, Director General, for, for coming here. This, this is not uh, something we, we take for granted. And, and, and again, I, I want to thank you also for, for your personal friendship. I think, I think when, it, when it comes to partnership, open discussion is a very, very important. And I think as we go through the next six to 12 months, um, better understanding each other constraints uh, will be key to the success of the program. But judging from what we've achieved in the last 15 years, Marcel, or so? 15 years. I think, I think we, can, we can be proud of what we achieved uh, and yet uh, uh, think altogether that this, this is only the start. So I wish us all a, a very good day and uh, thank you again for coming here.